Hey love bugs, this is Nikki from Call Me Ruby. I pray you're having an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening. Whenever this message so finds you, I am sitting outside. It's a beautiful, crisp morning. It's about 9.30 here. I'm enjoying a cup of coffee. And there's a beautiful blue jay. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my new subscribers. I am so excited that you decided to join the family. It is my prayer that you are encouraged, uplifted, and the Father confirms so much via this channel and for those of you who have been rocking with me for quite some time isn't the Lord good and isn't this such an exciting time I want to share with you a message that I have been sitting on for at least three or four weeks every time I sat down to record this message something always came up and I just saw the father as saying it wasn't the time it wasn't the time but over the course of the last couple of days the father has indeed been redirecting me back to this message I'm believing there will be no interruptions because I truly believe this is the time he wants it to be released Holy Spirit, I just invite you into this time and space. I ask that you bring to my spirit what you have shared over the last few weeks. Add to whatever you desire, Lord God, to further show forth what you are doing in this season, in this time. I thank you that it will edify, uplift, encourage, and bring hope to all those who are in this place of receiving that which you've said. May it confirm what you've been speaking to their spirits for quite some time. I thank you for this, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. This beautiful message began to download in my spirit a day after I released a message entitled, Lord of the Breakthrough. Lord of the Breakthrough. And it started with my son sending me a YouTube video. Now parents, I know you are very much familiar with your children and your teens bombarding you with videos. They always want you to see something, laugh with them, and learn what they are learning, okay? And so I'm used to my son sending me videos all the time of things he's interested in. He is just like his mama because he loves nature, things in nature. He loves animals, insects, and he's always keeping me informed about his latest favorite animals and sorts. And so... What struck me about this video and what immediately unctioned me in my spirit is that this was not one of the normal insects or animals he sent to me. This was about the male African bullfrog. As I proceeded to watch the video, my mouth dropped. This video was all about how a male African bullfrog saw that the newly hatched tadpoles, his offspring, his seed, was in danger of dying. They had hatched in a shallow part of the pond, which was better off in the beginning, but now that the water was evaporating, and because they were in danger of being eating or dying from the lack of water, he saw he had to move quick. And this male African bullfrog began to dig a channel in the water, which would allow them to get out of harm's way and swim to a deeper part of the pond. And what was just so awesome about this situation is that normally the frogs would not do that because they were too small and they were afraid of being eaten themselves. But the African bullfrog is said to be the size of a football and he was not at all intimidated. He was all about saving his offspring, his seed. Are y'all hearing that in the spirit? The Father will do what He has to do to ensure you experience a breakthrough, to ensure you get to the deeper part. Hear that in the spirit as well, because we know in the deep waters is where you learn how to survive. The Father does so much in the deep places, but let's get back to where I'm taking this. I'm trying to stay on track. So as the channel became big enough, to allow the tadpoles to swim to the deeper part of the pond, the commentator of this video then said, breakthrough. And I felt a jolt in my spirit. And even more, you all, he said, and father leads the way. I almost screamed. Those words offered so much confirmation as just the day before, I had released that breakthrough video and I was sharing in that video how the Father had indeed gone before us and broke through and was leading the way for so many of us to break through and enter into our promised land. We are indeed breaking through and many of us have already broken through. Do y'all hear that? It's a train. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but it's a train. Um, train siren is that what you call it i don't know what you call the train sounds <laughs> it escapes my mind right now but just as i was speaking about god leading us to our breakthrough i heard the train is that not confirmation or what we have crossed over into our promised land 
and I share all that background about the bullfrog video and whatnot because I want to let you all know how this began to download in my spirit. I always want you to see how strategic God is and how intentional he is in regards to relaying his messages. Let me share with you all what happens next. A few moments later after I posted that post, I came on to respond to comments that were under that post. And I saw that a dear sister had shared that this was confirmation and she thought it was just so funny that I was talking about an African bullfrog when she had felt in her spirit to watch the movie The Princess and the Frog. And she also suggested that if anyone felt led that they should watch it also. And she left the link for anyone who was interested in watching the movie. I have actually only saw that movie maybe twice and it was several years ago and i enjoyed the movie there were quite a few things in there that were like hmm you all know where i'm going but overall i enjoyed the movie after reading that dear sister's comment in that moment i felt like i'm gonna end up watching this movie you're gonna have me watch this movie lord i just feel it and that is when the snap crackle pop effect began okay the snap crackle pop you all remember the rice krispies commercials back in the day i'm telling my age when it was everything to hear those rice krispies just crackling in the milk anywho that is how i feel after i thought that in my spirit about watching that movie things began to be on and popping you all hence the snap crackle pop effect the father does not play about his confirmations okay we already know this and I was just sitting here like, let me count the waves because they were just coming from everywhere. I kid you not. I began to see green everywhere. It's like everywhere I looked, I saw green. And it wasn't just any type of green. It was the exact shade of green that the infamous Tiana dress is known for. That's the kind of green that was popping up everywhere, you all. I saw it on my YouTube feed via ads. I saw it on other social media platforms. I saw it in my house. I looked at my dog's little can on her crate, and it was the exact same color as Tiana's dress. You all, it was unreal. So I was like, okay, Lord, I hear you. Pretty sure I'm watching this movie. I almost forgot to mention, I log onto my Facebook and the first thing I see is a frog meme. I took note of the fact that it was uploaded 23 hours prior to me seeing it. Do you see how strategic the father is? How intentional he is? He is always ahead of us, ensuring that we get the message. So after logging off of my Facebook page, I quickly remember why I went on there in the first place. So I log back on. <laughs> and I kid you not right there just right smack dab there you all a friend of mine had posted something and she was talking about her granddaughter playing with toys i don't remember exactly what was being said i of course would share the screenshot but she was talking about her granddaughter playing with some toys and had uploaded an image <laughs> and you all probably are way ahead of me what was in the picture were two figurines I have no idea who the other figurine was, but I did see that one was Tiana in the infamous green dress. I was flabbergasted. And once again, I noticed that it was recently uploaded. This particular post was uploaded three hours prior to me seeing it. And he wasn't done, you all. He wanted to make good and sure that I got the message. So I log on to my YouTube to respond to comments. And you all, what I saw just literally, listen, let me just show you what I saw. And as can be seen, that was uploaded four weeks ago. As I shared earlier, I have been sitting on this word for quite some time. So as I sat down to watch this movie, the father did not waste any time downloading the things he wanted me to share with you all. This movie is majorly centered around two characters, Tiana and Prince Naveen. Tiana is a waitress who has dreams of opening a restaurant. She believes that hard work time and dedication is the way to achieve your dreams and at some point in the movie she raises enough money to do just that she goes out and purchases the building she's been looking at but just as fast as it came the bottom falls out and she loses the space that she bought for her restaurant now prince naveen who we see is a prince was born into wealth 
He has been afforded all the luxuries one could ask for and more. And that has caused him to not be as appreciative of the things that he has. He has gambled and squandered away money and other things. And his parents have temporarily cut him off. So he devises a plan to redeem his name, his honor, and to bring riches back into his life. And in his doing so, he comes across a character by the name of the Shadow Man. And the Shadow Man is indeed a dark character who offers Prince Naveen all that his heart desires and more. But he has to do things his way. He has to take his deal. And his deal involves witchcraft, voodoo, and that type of thing. Unfortunately, Prince Naveen agrees to take the deal. And in doing so, instead of gaining all that he was told he would gain, he actually ended up becoming a frog. He was turned into a frog. He went from prince to a commoner to a frog. All because he was deceived into thinking that getting things the fast way, getting things via witchcraft and manipulation was the way to go. So let's examine those two parallels. On one side we have Tiana who believes that slow and steady is the way to do things. Who believes that putting in hard work is how you achieve things. Is how you go about getting your dreams accomplished. And it does appear that Tiana's approach is the right approach. And it is very admirable that she put in the work and raised the money to purchase the building in which she wanted to have her restaurant. Well, the father dropped in my spirit as I thought about she put in all of that work. She didn't take the easy way. She did what she had to do. So why is it that when she got the building, it was just seemingly snatched away from her? And what the father dropped in my spirit was that, listen, this is so you can see. I want you to think about this in the spirit, okay? Without his blueprint, without his leading and guiding, without his favor, the bottom will indeed fall out. He wanted me to look at this from the viewpoint of someone who is chosen. Chosen by him. If you're chosen by the Father and fully surrendered and submitted to his will and purpose, he's not going to allow you to continue on a wrong path or even do things without him but for so long. At some point, he's going to get your attention, however he has to do that. And you may have great intentions. You may have a heart that desires to do the right thing. But until you allow God to lead and guide you, until you allow God to be the center of whatever it is that he has called you to do, things are going to continue to be quite interesting. Now let's examine the prince in his situation. He was born into wealth. He never had to work for anything. What the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit in regards to this situation is that if you do not have the Father's discernment, if you have not allowed him to take you through a process, the process is so important, you all. It prepares you and causes you to be equipped to manage and properly care for the things he's calling you into, the things in your promised land. It wasn't difficult for the prince to just gamble his money away, to squander things, to not be appreciative of his status, the family he had been blessed to be born into. He took those things for granted. And because of that, because he just wanted a quick fix, because he just wanted things to be back to normal, he took the deal of the shadow man. And as we all know, he turns into a frog. And the unfortunate thing about this is that he pulls Tiana into this mess, okay? She's in a position where she is just so low because of what happened, her losing the restaurant, and she is desperate to once again be in that position of owning that place for her restaurant. So they make a deal. Like I said earlier, he is told that if he is kissed by a princess, he will return to a human. Because Tiana was dressed as a princess the first time he met her, he thought she was a real princess. So he makes a deal with her saying, if you kiss me and help me return to a human, I will see to it that you get the money for your restaurant. Just all kinds of deals going on, huh? <laughs> and we know what happened then. She then turned into a frog. Listen, that is what the father wants us to really pay close attention to in this movie. Let's look at them as if they were chosen by the Father. Both of them were in situations that the Father had to work in. Hear that as it pertains to your kingdom marriage. For quite some time, for many, 
both individuals were in a process and it took certain things to happen in their lives for them to realize the error of some of their ways and to even appreciate what the father had provided for them. Please notice how one decision by one spouse affected the other. Brother Naveen had Sister Tiana all wrapped up in his shenanigans. Granted, she decided to play a part of it, but I just want to show you how one choice can easily affect the other. And what the Holy Spirit just pointed out is the fact that she turned into what he was, a frog. Again, what you do, choices you make can affect your spouse. That is why it is so important that we stay in the presence of the Father, that we allow Him to lead and guide us as we wait for our kingdom spouses, our ordained spouses. We simply cannot afford to make unnecessary mistakes, especially those that will hugely affect our spouse. Listen, y'all, there are two things He's wanting us to hear in that. That which I just said, and listen, the thing that just was screaming in my spirit as I watched this movie was that the Father is saying, this is all about ensuring that our beloved lives moving forward are clear and free of anything that could hinder what he wants to do in our future marriages and our future generations. There are so many who have been facing hardships, delays, and so much more as it pertains to their marriage and purpose because of things that took place in their bloodline. Things that took place generations back. And I'm not talking about generational curses, okay? We know that once we accept Christ, we know Christ went to the cross to redeem us. We are no longer under the curse of the law, but we are under Him. He has paid the price for us. Galatians 3.13 states, Christ purchased our freedom. And redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. So we can clearly see that Christ's death freed us from being bound to that law, bound to what came with that law. And now we are responsible for our own sin and not under a curse because of things done by our fathers. Jeremiah 31 verses 29 through 30 states, In those days they will not say again, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. So again, Christ died to redeem us from the curse of the law, and we are now under Him. And with that comes liberty and freedom in Christ. As many have entered into this new place, this new exciting time in the Father, there is a group of individuals the Father wants to reach. He wants them to be aware that there are things in their life that must be broken and renounced. This must take place now before they can move freely into the fullness of all that God has for them, their marriage and purpose. And like I said before, this is not about generational curses. This is about things that have affected your family, your bloodline indirectly, okay? These are things such as patterns, consequences, sins, different types of things that have traveled from generation to generation because of choices that were made, because of oaths, because of rituals that took place. A lot of things that many are not even aware of and they're confused about, well, why is this happening in my family? Why is divorce so prevalent in my family? Why do the married couples in my family seem to be unhappy? Why are so many in my family having a difficult time finding a spouse? All the answers are in the secret place. Take some time to spend time with the Father. Ask the Father about these things in your family and ask Him to break and you renounce those things that you see in your family that have traveled from generation to generation. Ask Him to reveal to you things you don't even know about and cover every area. Just decree and declare that everything that was done, known and unknown, be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. And do this for your bloodline and your future spouse's bloodline. Ask forgiveness for anything that took place in your bloodline on both sides that were not of him, that did not please his heart. And just decree and declare that from this day forward, 
You are walking in righteousness with the Father. You are walking in the liberty and freedom of Christ. Many of us who are indeed in our season of marriage, we've gone through this process. The Father has brought to light and exposed these things, these spiritual strongholds in our families. And we have broken them off in the power of Jesus Christ. And we've allowed him to do what he needed to do in our lives. And we have decreed and declared that moving forward, our future generations will glorify God. They will walk in righteousness before the Father. There's a reason why he's bringing it to light now. Because you are chosen. You are chosen. I've said it in other videos and I will say it again. For many of us who have been standing and contending for these marriages, we are the breakers. We are the ones the Father has chosen to set the standard, to put an end to what may have been unhealthy marriages, marriages that were not of God, divorce, whatever it may be for your individual family. The Father is saying you are the breaker. You have been chosen by Him because He can trust you, because you are surrendered and submitted to His will and purpose. Your marriage will be exactly what the Father first saw, and it will set the tone for future generations. Hallelujah. And that is why the Father had to be unwavering when it came to our pity parties, temper tantrums. Why is it taking so long, Lord? All the things that come with this weight, He had to be unwavering because there was so much involved. Your offspring, those of you who are going to bear children, they're going to be walking in such newness, you all. They're going to be walking in this fresh new place that the Father has caused a birth forth through you to set your future generations up to give God glory. So let's me explain to you all how the Father brought this message back to me and it caused me to know that he still wanted me to indeed share it. I was sitting out on the porch one morning and I asked the Father, Father, what do you have for your children on today? Is there a message? And in that moment, what I saw flash in my spirit was the image of a tree that had fallen in the backyard of my childhood home. Hear that in the spirit, in the backyard of my childhood home. Home. As I have mentioned on occasion in a few past videos, the Father has had me in a transition for the last several months. As a matter of fact, I was in the same location for seven years, even the same house, up until the middle of last year. Listen, the Father had been decreeing and declaring in my spirit that He was indeed shifting me into my promised land. I had been hearing, I'm taking you to your land of milk and honey. I'm taking you to your land of milk and honey for months before things just took me by surprise, to say the least. I had to leave that location fast, and I had no idea where I was going or where the Father was leading me. But it just so happens that I ended up in my childhood home for several months, you all. It was not in my plans. It was not what I thought I wanted for myself, but it was what the Father wanted. You all, I can't even begin to describe to you all all the Father did in my spirit, in my heart, just overall as I spent time in my childhood home. It was so intentional. There were things He wanted to show me that required me to be in this exact place. And while it was not easy, while it did not feel good, while a lot of things happened while I was in this transition that I, listen, that were hard, okay? There has been so much growth, so much beauty, and so much purpose in this place. I say all that to say that even though it may seem small to some, the fact that the tree fell while I was staying at that home the time I did, the fact that I heard the tree fall, hear that in the spirit, I heard the sound, and this happened not long after the house was put up for sale. None of that was a coincidence. So let me share with you all what the Father revealed to me in regards to this fallen tree. The Father wants us to know that many of us have just come out of a season of things been cut away. The previous season was a season in which He was pruning, cultivating, and preparing us for this new place that many of us have entered into and others are about to enter into. The previous season for many has been a season of cutting away of dead things and that pertains to our bloodlines and that is why when he showed me that image I knew he was wanting me to share this message because he was wanting us to know that he has made all things new as we have renounced 
and understand where we are, understand what he has done and what he is doing in our families. And what really caught my attention is that it did not uproot. It simply broke. Hear that in the spirit, y'all. It broke and a huge majority of it is lying across the yard. There is still a significant part of the trunk that's still rooted in the ground. And it is a huge tree. It has to be a 60 or 70 footer. No cap, y'all. It's a huge tree. And that just testifies to what the Holy Spirit just revealed through this message. Lots of things have been broken and renounced in so many of our families. And it is because He is designed to unite so many couples in this season. He had to call some things in our family's bloodlines to be broken, to be renounced. And that tree falling when it did, the fact that I was here when it happened, the fact that I heard it, is the Father's way of making sure we hear Him loud and clear. The things that were hindering marriages, hindering healthy, God-centered marriages, kingdom marriages are no longer. Those things have been broken, okay, by the power of Jesus. And again, it's because you are a willing vessel. You've allowed him to do this through you. And listen, you all, I'm trying not to get so excited, but you all, that's why I hear my spirit as I think about that tree falling the way it did. And when I think about it still being rooted in the ground, it's just evidence, reassurance that your foundation is set. The foundations for many of our families has been him. He has ensured that our soul is rich, that the soul is provided with all the things and nutrients that it needs. The issue was not in the foundation. It wasn't in the soil itself. It was in a few of the branches that was causing decay in the tree. It was causing disease to spread within that tree. And that is what he brought to my attention today as it pertains to these consequences, these patterns, these behaviors that he indeed has cut off and broken on today. And that is what that tree represented you all. You all better praise the Father for new beginnings. Praise Him for new things springing forth. He has indeed cut away all the dead things and all the things that was causing decay and disease. And I'm hearing John 15, 2 in my spirit, so let's just read it. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. The Father has cut off dead things in the previous season in preparation for what's to come. He's cut off every hindrance as it pertains to purpose and these kingdom marriages. This is a season of blossoming. We are in full bloom and the Father is desiring that much fruit be produced in this new place. God is making all things new. All things are new. As I said, God is making all things new. It caused me to think about how after I watched the movie, I looked up the names of the characters and I remember Prince Naveen. The name Naveen actually means new fresh creative bright so god is just showing that listen this is a season where all things have become new we are in a new place i just thought it was so awesome that the name naveen meant new i also looked at the name of tiana the name tiana actually means follower of christ anointed and in some languages it means princess is God just not so amazing? Because we have decided to follow Christ, all things are becoming new and have become new in this season. You see how he just put that together? And love bugs, I took it even a step further and I looked up the name of the actress who played Tiana. Her name is Anika Noni Rose. I was flabbergasted to see that Anika meant grace. Her name means grace. God's grace is usually defined as his unmerited favor. His unmerited favor, meaning there's nothing you can do to earn it. He gives it to you because he wants you to have it and because you are in need of it. And the very word unmerited means undeserving. We saw it in the last season, but we're going to see it even more as we enter this new season. God's unmerited favor, grace upon grace. And you all, the Holy Spirit just had me digging and digging and digging, okay? I even looked up Anika's middle name, Noni, and I saw that it oftentimes means ninth. 
like nine ninth and it also means gift of god are you all hearing that in the spirit ninth and gift of god what stood out to me and what really ushered my spirit was the fact that it meant ninth ninth not only has the father been speaking to us about this process in terms of pregnancy and birth but it also attests to the fact that these things are indeed a gift from god our promised land the things within our promised land are indeed a gift from god and you all let me tell you during the time the father was just giving me downloads about this video i was seeing nine everywhere videos from nine months kept popping up i was seeing nine just in the most random of places and yesterday yesterday as i was recording this message my sister sent me a text message and she said that a neighbor of hers had their baby and what made it even more significant is that while i was staying with her for a few weeks we were talking about the fact that her neighbor had just found out she was pregnant and lo and behold as i'm doing this message she texts me and says she had her baby and hear this you all you're gonna scream hear this you know how we have been saying suddenly it's gonna happen suddenly her neighbor had the baby sooner than she expected listen the father isn't playing with us he said what he said it is the time it is the time you all now let's get to her last name which is Rose and we have been talking about roses for the last few weeks we are indeed in full bloom and how strategic that her last name is Rose and get this y'all I couldn't help but chuckle like at this she was born in Bloomfield Connecticut and attended a high school called Bloomfield High School y'all better be hearing this in the spirit you all the father is screaming, you are in full bloom and things are happening. When I saw that bloom field, Connecticut, I was like, listen, I hear you, Lord. So I hope that encourages so many of you to know where you are and what God is doing. When the father began to unction me to watch the movie, The Princess and the Frog, I began to hear the song Almost There playing over and over in my spirit. And I kid you not, y'all, for the last four weeks, it has been on repeat. You all know the song, Almost There. I'm going to go over the lyrics with you all because they truly bless me and the Father said much through these lyrics. The first verse begins as so. Mama, I don't have time for dancing. That's gonna just have to wait a while. Ain't got time for messing around and it's not my style. This whole town can slow you down. People taking the easy way. But I know exactly where I am going. I'm getting closer and closer every day. And the chorus says, and I'm almost there. I'm almost there. People down here think I'm crazy, but I don't care. Trials and tribulations, I've had my share. There ain't nothing gonna stop me now, cause I'm almost there there and the next verse says i remember daddy told me fairy tales can't come true you got to make them happen it all depends on you so i work real hard each and every day now things for sure are going my way just doing what i do Look out boys, I'm coming through. Then it goes into the chorus again, but there's a slight change in the words and it goes like this. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. People gonna come here from everywhere. And I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And then the bridge says, There's been trials and tribulations. You know I've had my share. But I've climbed a mountain. Wow, y'all, I'm sorry. The father just dropped in some revelation. As I was reading this, and I almost screamed. Let me stay calm. But it says, but I've climbed a mountain, and I've crossed a river, and I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And it just repeated that a couple times, and that was the song. I hope you all could hear the father as I read those lyrics. If you feel led, 
Take some time to read over the lyrics again and see what the Father speaks to you as it pertains to you and your situation. But for time's sake, I'm not going to go into the lyrics verse by verse, line by line, what have you. But just point out some things that really stood out in my spirit and just go from there. I'm going to jump to the second verse and just begin there. As we find ourselves almost there, right at this promise of receiving our ordained spouses, there are many things around us that can distract us, that attempt to slow us down. If we look at this verse as it pertains to kingdom marriage, we see that if we know exactly where the Father is taking us, if we are standing firm on His confirmations, there's nothing that can distract us from what He said. And because of our faith, because of our trust in Him, we're getting closer and closer. And when it comes to the verse that talks about people wanting to take the easy way, it just goes back to what we talked about earlier. When we try to bypass the process, we try to get things before our time. We set ourselves up for settling. We set ourselves up for deception, witchcraft, all sorts of things that delay and sometimes derail you for a time from what the Father has for you. That is why it is so important to have discernment and to allow the Father to lead and guide our paths. And that is what I got from that line. Tiana was saying, listen, I don't want to take the easy road. I want to do things slow and steady. And like we said, she had the general idea, but she failed to realize she left the pilot out of the equation. And oh, the chorus, the chorus hits me all oh, in my spirit, you all. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. People down here think I'm crazy, but I don't care. Trials and tribulations, I've had my share, but there ain't nothing going to stop me now because I'm almost there. Glory. I know you all hear the Father in that. We are almost there. And listen, people do think we're crazy, don't they? They think we're crazy for standing for what we stand for. They think we're crazy for believing that God can send us a spouse, the spouse that he foresaw for us from the very beginning of time. They think we're crazy for believing that the dreams, the visions, and all the ways he's been so intentional are leading us to this moment. They definitely think we cray cray, you all. But listen, we are almost there. And God is showing us that in so many ways. We have to keep that I don't care attitude intact. <laughs> because listen, they're about to see something, okay? They're about to see exactly what thus saith the Lord. They're about to see with their own eyes what our rock has been cooking, okay? I know you all better be excited. They're going to see the glory all over your relationship. They're going to, that's right, Crow, or whatever you are. And then it goes into the next verse. Okay, I think this Crow want to speak this message. I think he wants to speak this message. What you got to say, sir? Or ma'am? The peoples are listening. <laughs> okay, y'all. Is that right? And what else? Really? So you don't care either is what you're saying. You don't care what they think, huh? <laughs> Anywho, you all, let me stop. Shenanigans. And then the chorus goes into trials and tribulations. I've had my share. Now listen, I know you all feel that deep down in your spirits. Trials and tribulations, child. Trials and... What is this little bird, y'all? They're so precious. I'm sorry, y'all. It just flew right here as I said trials and tribulations that's just encouragement that you were not ever alone okay but then it goes into trials and tribulations I've had my share but how many can attest with me that even though the trials and tribulations have been present the father has made himself known and what I hear in my spirit is second Corinthians 12 9 but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness are you all hearing that his power is made perfect in weakness isn't that so comforting to know and right now the father just dropped in my spirit the fact that that line said trials and tribulations i've had my share there ain't nothing gonna stop me now 
because I'm almost there. We often speak about how when the warfare increases, when the trials just begin to pop up out of nowhere, that is just evidence that we are almost there. We're so close. Some things are allowed to strengthen us, to prepare us, and other things the enemy tries to just throw in the way to see what we're going to do, to see how we're going to respond. And I just think it's so awesome how in this song it said, there ain't nothing going to stop me now because I'm almost there. That gave her evidence that she was almost there. Listen, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down. And what I hear as I allow the spirit to speak to me about the verse that refers to, I remember daddy told me fairy tales can't come true. I think about how. Like I said before, so many do not believe that there is such a thing as kingdom spouses, that God can indeed and wants to choose our spouse. And they tell you that you're living in a world of make-believe. You're wanting a fairy tale. I can't even begin to tell you the times I've heard that when I tell people what I expect in a relationship and I begin to explain to them how I do not date. I do not date casually, but I'm waiting on God to send my ordained spouse. And it's so foreign to some. What the Father has for us, for those of us who have waited and trusted him and took him at his word, it is going to be beyond our wildest imaginations. It's going to be beyond a fairy tale. This is going to be real and it's going to be fruitful. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to shine with the glory of Christ. You all, I am so very excited. Don't worry about it when people tell you, you need to take matters into your own hands, steer your own ship, take control of your own life as this verse suggested. Stay the chorus, continue to flow in God's divine flow. And then the chorus comes around again with a slight variation in words. And listen, it got me excited. It says, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. People gonna come from everywhere because I'm almost there. And just hear that as your story, bringing God the glory. It's going to cause others to take notice of your relationship and want to hear your story. And your story will lead back to the Father. So listen, it is all purposeful. People are going to come from everywhere to hear what the Father did for you too. And to take part in whatever ministry, whatever area of influence you too will be working in. So let's move to my favorite part of the song, the bridge, the part that had me ready to run like you saying bolt, okay? And it said, trials and tribulations, you know I've had my share. And what did I see an elderly woman with her hands on her hip? Like, you know I had my share. <laughs> Don't mind me, you all. But you know I had my share. But I've climbed a mountain and I've crossed a river and I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Woo, y'all, I am excited. Let me touch on that, y'all, because the spirit just began to flow as I read that part. This signifies a change, a come to Jesus moment, so to speak. After they had turned into frogs, they went on this journey to try and reverse the curse. And throughout this journey, they began to learn more about each other. And they began to see what was really important. And they began to see the error of their ways. This is the case as it is with our kingdom unions. While many of us have yet to encounter them in the natural, we have been journeying in the spirit. There have been things going on on both ends and the Father's opened both of our eyes to so many things and gotten us together. And that's just why he's decreed and declared that it is the time. And as Tiana and Prince Naveen began to see that from themselves, things began to look more optimistic. They say, you know what? We have each other. If we have to stay frogs, then we'll just be frogs in love. We'll just be frogs that are married. <laughs> and that's what takes me to the next part that just had me, like I said, wanting to run. The line that said, but I've climbed a mountain and I've crossed a river and I'm almost there. Hear that in the spirit, you all. When you climb that mountain, that mountain being God taking you to an altitude where you see things from his perspective. You allow him to show you A, B, and C, to show you what needs to be changed, tweaked, and to teach you about the process. Then comes the actual process, crossing that river. Listen, it takes lots of strength to swim across a river, even to pedal across a river in a canoe or a boat or whatever. It takes strength. It takes time. It takes endurance. And that is what I saw when I thought about that river. 
You climbed that mountain. You've crossed that river. And I'm almost there. The river also represents the cleansing we go through. Our process indeed cleanses us. It purifies us. And that is what the Father adopted my spirit as it pertains to crossing that river. It also pertains to reaching a finish line, getting across to the other side, your promised land. Are you hearing what the Father is saying? And at the end of this movie, they had settled on just being frogs forever. They were saying, you know what, we have each other. We learned what we needed to learn. We went on a journey that taught us so much about ourselves. And during their marriage ceremony, as they kissed, they found that that kiss caused them to turn human again. We know that God works in mysterious ways. That is what I heard as soon as I said that. Because as I stated earlier in this message, in order for the prince to return to human form, he had to kiss a princess. Well, he thought Tiana was a princess, but she really wasn't. But when she kissed the prince, as they were sealing their vows, that made her a princess. Just like that, y'all. Yes, y'all, the Holy Spirit is not planned today. Our marriages are going to break a lot of things. Our marriages are going to cause a lot of new things to spring forth. There is a lot that comes with these God-centered marriages, these kingdom marriages. When Tiana kissed the prince the first time, they were just strangers. That's why she became a frog and it did not work. But because they were sealing this marriage with a kiss, listen, all things became new. Their marriage caused them to immediately become everything they were supposed to be and who the Father had always saw them to be. They went from frogs to being created in the image of God. It just took the process. It just took the pruning, the cultivating, the breaking, the renouncing. All those things we spoke about earlier. It took all those things to cause them to realize what really mattered and who really mattered. The Father's will and purpose and His people, His kingdom. Well, you all, that was a lot, but I had to make sure I left every stone unturned. And even now, as I'm trying to close out, I'm still hearing more things. This movie also testifies to God's perfect timing. Just how the movie plays out, you can see how Prince Naveen and Tiana were destined to meet. And while they did not recognize who the other was in the moment they met, Things played out in such a way that they were able to spend time together. They were able to go on a journey together. They were able to learn about each other. And what the Father just dropped in my spirit was, it took one encounter. One encounter caused all these things to come into play, you all. And days after, they were married. And it testifies to when it's God's perfect timing, He opens things up in a way you didn't see it before. Tiana and Prince Naveen were not studying each other at first, okay? They had their mind on what they wanted and that wasn't one another. And what I'm hearing in the spirit is that when the time is right, the Father will open their eyes, open your eyes even, to who this individual is. And everything will come with an ease and move swiftly. Just like something as simple as that kiss as a married changed everything when they thought it was all said and done nothing can stop what the father has decreed and declared in our lives we just have to wait on god's perfect timing and the movie can even testify to counterfeits prince naveen was supposed to marry tiana's friend who was rich that was his way of getting more money but things put out in a way where tiana ended up with the prince because it was always meant for her to end up with the prince. And also, as much as Tiana's friend wanted to marry a prince, it was her dream since she was little to marry a prince. When she saw Tiana and Naveen together, it was undeniable that they were supposed to be together. And she easily gave up her idea of marrying Prince Naveen. Like I said earlier, this all testifies to how many are going to look at your union and know God put you together. It's going to be undeniable. So don't get all bent out of shape when your spouse, your ordained spouse is with someone else when they're in another relationship. What God said is what he said. And like I shared in another video, God is opening the eyes of so many and letting them know that's not who I have for you. And he's showing them you. He's bringing us together two by two. He's matching us with our original spouse. 
The father dropped that in my spirit several months back that he is connecting us with our original spouse. That means there is no other for this person other than you. You are the one he designed for this person. You were there from the very beginning. And nobody can be us. Nobody nobody can compliment our spouses the way we can and vice versa. So I pray this encourage you all. The father has indeed broken off so many things and new things are springing forth through these unions, through these marriages, and we're going to give God glory. Our stories are going to indeed give God glory. Listen, you all, take this back to the Father. Spend time in the secret place and allow Him to expound on this more. He has much to say. Thank you so much to those of you who have sown. May God bless you a hundredfold. May He increase you in every area of your life. And you better know He's going to do exactly that, you all. It's an exciting time. So much is happening. I almost can't contain my excitement, you all. <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice here. I wake up every day, you all, just so excited in my spirit about what he's about to do. And it is my prayer that you all feel this joy, that you all feel his peace and just know that what he said is what he said. We have entered into our promised land. Some of you are about to enter into your promised land. And listen, it's getting good, good. I love you guys so much. And until next time, be blessed. Be blessed.